Hello and welcome to my series of conversations with men and women whose ideas, vision and philosophy define our contemporary world. My guest today is perhaps best known for his oratory, his wisdom, his wit and his gentle sarcasm. He's a ten-time member of Parliament. He's been awarded the Distinguished Speaker of the Year Award. He's now the Speaker of the Lok Sabha. I'm delighted to welcome Mr. Somnath. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, the first sort of weeks in Parliament, what has it been like? Well, nothing unusual has taken place, but uh, of course I'm concerned in seeing that the Parliament functions in a manner which uh, we can transact the business. Now a new government has come and it has announced this policy. I'm sure it will try to implement these policies through legislation and inside the House. And I have also said the, on the day I was elected speaker that I want that both sides of the House will get adequate opportunities to speak. No, it's quite interesting and I think uh, by and large, uh, the situation is becoming normal. You know, ten terms uh, in the opposition and now suddenly you're in the chair and, and you have to yes. bring order and discipline. How frustrating has that been? Yes, somewhat, uh, I, I can't say really I'm having job satisfaction at the moment because I'm more used to talking than listening. <laughs> That's a bad habit also. A, parliament, a member of parliament or legislation must also have the habit of listening. But I can't intervene. However, I, I accept it's a great challenge and since the all the entire house has reposed their faith in me, it's my duty to rise up to their expectations and I shall try my best. Well, I'm started, I've started enjoying it, but a lot of other work is there which is little, it takes a lot of time. These visits and uh, functions and lot of files and study work to do. I didn't anticipate that. But you say it's, a, it's an interesting job. What are the aspects that you're really enjoying? No aspect, enjoying in the sense, you see, I have a, I feel that uh, people should know what is happening in parliament and that they should feel that the parliament is really looking after their problems and trying to sort it out, to sort them out. Therefore, I want the more interaction between the people and the parliament's functioning. This is my target. I don't know, not very easy. I've started very in a small measure that said that the entire proceedings of the house should be open to uh, our television, to the people through television. And uh, more interaction with the people I'm going to meet the uh, media leaders in the media and going meeting the all the parties separately and jointly together. I want to see that uh, young members, new members should get opportunity to participate. There are many, I'm sure, talented people have come, 300 new members, 300 plus, how to give them better opportunity. The other day, young members spoke, I said, very well done. Well, I want to give that. This is a house should be a lively place. I said that doesn't mean disturbance. Good intelligent uh, interruption. But, the, you know, the, the, the perception is that the house is frequently chaotic. People run into the well of the house at the cost of public money. There is uh, no business. You're absolutely right. But that's, doesn't, that's not the whole picture. Yes, sometimes it does, does take place. Sometimes there are such issues in the, in the country come up which have their inevitable repercussion, the reflection in the house. There has been trouble, but over the, over the period you will find that we do a lot of uh, good work also. Then all the legislations are passed. Maybe we have, to, we have been sitting late in, after 6 o'clock. But uh, this is the picture which is in the minds of the people. My humble endeavor will be with the cooperation of all to change that perception. It does sometimes waste its time, waste money, but all the, and on the overall situation is not that bad. Wouldn't you say on some occasions, like the women's uh, reservation bill, uh, that it's just the process of disruption that scuttles it, and it's really not the will of the house that is measured or acted upon? You're right, absolutely right. Sometimes, you see, this has become the, uh, an idea has developed among the political parties also in the legislature 
that if you can stall the proceedings of the house, you have registered your protest in the um, best possible manner as it were. But that is why target is stalling the proceedings. Therefore, because it gets, if I may, may not be misunderstood, that gets the headline next day, namely house could not function. But uh, I have been suggesting there are methods of registering your protest inside the house and you can do so by participation in the debate and making your views known very well. I mean, in a manner which will impress the others if you want to do that. Apart from appealing sort of for relative uh, sanity, uh, what kind of institutional structural changes might you sort of dream about, wish, seek for that would, that would change this? You see, there is no magic formula I per se. It is a question. Now, my, I think I have an advantage because I know most of the leaders for a very long time in the present house, earlier also. Therefore, I can interact with them uh, on a personal basis. I have been requesting them, please put me to test and see that if you are getting opportunity or not. Um, and uh, that is why I am very, I feel confident that ultimately some, I say, new members are there, new, uh, suddenly change of position. It's sometimes difficult to reconcile to the new, uh, new positions they are occupying. Therefore, there is some feelings that they should get proper opportunities and all that. I'm ultimately, you see, just second week is much, much better <laughs> than it was at the beginning. You say, I don't know, I wish somebody could suggest to me what it is. But uh, ultimately, they have, must have also faith in the chair. That's also very important and I've been trying to do that. Of course, uh, and what I am trying to do it to the best of my ability, forgetting that I belong to a particular party. And this is what is being done. And well, let me, I wish, I am sure I'll get everybody's cooperation ultimately. Saturday, you just mentioned uh, your political party. How difficult is it when you suddenly make the switch to the ch speaker's chair uh, to forget that? Uh, you represent a political party in a constituency in parliament. Well, I, I don't feel any difficulty at all because representing my constituency, I need that is not done through the chairs. Of, but as I still remain a member of parliament, without being a member of parliament, I won't be the speaker. Therefore, I have my commitments to my constituency that I'll have to do outside the house. And certainly, I, I, I don't feel any problem at all. Because as a communist, I think I'm sort of I'm disciplined enough to separate my different types of duties that are assigned to me. I'm still very proud to become to be a member of the Communist Party of India, Marxist, and I have said I shall never give up this membership. Therefore, there is no conflict between the two. I have my own constituents. I have my policies and programs. My party's views are there, but here I have to see. So the parliament functions properly and I want the people should have pride in the parliament as I am proud to be a member of parliament Lok Sabha. That's I have the confidence of so many people in my constituency. They have sent me with certain hopes, certain expectations and that apart from the responsibility, I also feel somewhat proud that I do represent the people. They have faith in me. Therefore, people must be feel proud that they have got a house of people, they have got a parliament or legislature, which is really trying to do the duty, that they are happy also, they are discharging the function. This is what I am trying to bring out, not me. All the, all the honorable speakers have done it, have tried to do it. Sometimes uh, one or two days, unfortunately, the disturbances remain in people's mind more than good discussion. You know, it was, I think, uh, Gladstone who said that uh, it was the job of speakers initially to protect royalty, and then it was to protect uh, the interests of the ruling party, and now it is really to protect parliament from itself. Well, I feel that we have to protect uh, the great system of parliamentary democracy that our constitution has envisaged and laid down. And there is no other, no import, more important organization than the House of the People. And I want people's faith in that so that this system is also strengthened. Of course, today I may have faith or belief in some other system, 
but I have taken the, uh, what I said, I am committed to the maintaining of the system that is in our constitution. So what might be this other system that... Well, of course, we talk of people's democracies, you know. But there I know that it is not at the moment, uh, it's not... Uh, it's not on the card in the sense. So what form and structure might people's democracy take? As you know, we, people's democracy here in this country, it's people's large, let us take it. We have to, you know that. Therefore, that is not at the moment we are uh, sort of visualizing. We have to have uh, this system that the constitution envisages. But I am talking here of the, my function in the House as the presiding officer. Therefore, as I said, whatever may be my views, whatever may be my ultimate uh, expectation, that has no concern so far as... Uh, you have expressed anguish at, at sort of many imperfections, including the criminalization of politics. Uh, the issue of uh, tainted ministers uh, has come up. Now, of course, you're obliged to take a politically neutral position. But how anguished do you feel about some of these issues? Well, that's, I think every, every uh, citizen of India, right-thinking citizen of India is perturbed about these issues. And also at the same time, we have to consider our, the system of governance we are having, the criminal justice system, how it is functioning. I suggested that <coughs> the target will be early disposal of the criminal cases be one a member of parliament, be an ordinary citizen. But for years, somewhat something is pending. And you see, it is also unjust if a, somebody who is aspiring to be in politics or who want to do, I mean, discharge his functions properly, so somebody makes a charge and it's kept pending for years together, then ultimately he's acquitted, he loses these all, all opportunity of participation. Therefore, so, uh, the sooner these are decided, these cases are decided, the better. Secondly, of course, I also said in the House as a leader of my party that propriety probably demands that those who have been charged cheated for the time being should not hold any office, important office like ministers, etc. But uh, ultimately, if these two cannot be combined, this always attempt should be there to continue. And after all, it's a people's choice. How can you totally ignore that? Therefore, in spite of allegations, in spite of charge sheets, in spite of being in jail, people are getting elected. But if, the, if, it, if that reflects the view of the people, view of the people you cannot stop it. Uh, therefore, yes, one feels unhappy, one feels part of. Of course, also, there is now induction of so many other um, interests in parliament, which earlier were not there. The different, of course, it should different, uh, represent different uh, interests, different... So are you referring to yes. film stars, criminals, businessmen? Yes, yes, it's being said. Yes, you see that, I need not specify. But uh, these are issues which the country should be concerned with. But uh, to say that whoever, whoever has is facing a charge sheet, is disqualified automatically. I don't agree to that extent. Uh, but uh, it should be left to the person concerned if he feels that so long as a charge sheet is there, uh, he should not be minister. But there are, you know, there are too many exceptions. And here, uh, on all sides of the spectrum and all areas, we find this. Therefore, <laughs> always... Uh, Always there is a matter of controversy, but as a as an Indian, I am unhappy. Unhappy that is there is a lot of question marks that are being being uh, put. You have been uh, described as as um, a Bhadralok, Bengali Bhadralok, as an aristocrat amongst the proletariat. There was a newspaper that called you a Red Baron. Uh, how would you describe yourself? How, you know, how do you see yourself fitting into uh, the mold of a leadership of a communist party? You see, as I have said earlier, also I feel the great satisfaction and pride when none other than Comrade Pramod Das Gupta asked me to join the party. I have been associated with the party. When my first election, I was an independent candidate 
with no doubt CPI in support. And I also had their symbol as my symbol, but I had not joined the party then. But uh, Comrade Pramod Dasgupta wanted to be a member of the party, and I did very happily and rather enthusiastically also. And this is my great satisfaction that the Communist Party of India, Marxist, has faith in me, that I will sort of espouse the causes we all hold dear and that uh, I shall not let them down. I believe I have not let them down for the years. They have not only selected me as a candidate, but also given me the great responsibility to be their leader. And now they have selected me to be the speaker. Uh, well, I have never felt any problem because, you see, long before I became member, I have been appearing for the I have a close contact, somehow it developed over the years in trade unions. I have been a president in a lot of trade unions and appearing in legal matters. Therefore, I have never felt any, any sort of being misfit there. And uh, my, as I said, my greatest satisfaction, in a sense, little proud that they have faith in me. Somebody said I have deserted my class. <laughs> I don't mind. We were just talking about how you may or you, know, you don't feel a misfit uh, in, in, in the party. Do you regret that you're not a member of the uh, Politburo? No, no, I don't regret. What significance does that have? Well, naturally, a member of party would like to be there more for the purpose of participation in the highest echelons of the city. But I certainly don't regret. I'm quite happy to be the member of the Central Committee, which is itself a very high uh, position in the party. And I'm humble enough to accept my responsibilities there. There is no question of any regret or anything. And uh, it's the very fact that the party has, Politburo has continuously reposed its faith in me. That is itself a recognition for me. I'm quite happy there. What do you think it is about uh, uh, the communist uh, ideology, philosophy, its way of working? Uh, that has uh, most enabled it uh, to be uh, the only democratically elected party that is forming governments uh, in, 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 in India. You see, it's, I must say, I, 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 what I feel, it's genuine concern for the common people to remove the disparities amongst the people, to try to provide to the people what is just you know, operating in the system in, that is prevalent in India, where we are still unfortunately uh, not so strong in most many of the states, most of the states rather. Here, uh, we have to see that, uh, that the people are made aware of their rights, that the, that the government of the day is fully conscious of their duties and responsibilities. People should be should be given what are their entitlements. In, I'm talking about this in the, in the context we are operating now. But you know, in a rhetorical sense, that is the aspiration and projection of every political party, that they want to be close to the people, that they ensure social because justice. Because we have been able to do it. We are not only talking about it, but we are doing it. Otherwise, see, the way this record would not have been possible for six consecutive elections, for a party to be, have the confidence of the people. That shows we do not believe in only talking about it, showing concern. So why do you think it hasn't had a more national appeal? It hasn't had. Well, because as I say, this is also in a sense a rather, uh, what I should say, surprising that we have not been able to uh, sort of expand in other areas. I went to Amritsar yesterday for two days. I was there. I got tremendous uh, respect and regard for the party I found. People came to me and said, because you are a member of the CPM, we have faith in you that you will take up our cause. See, this is a great thing. They know uh, that here are the people who will uh, really look after the struggling people in this country who have to 
fight for their survival. Yeah. survival and yet, it, 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 yet, in a sense, communism is, uh, is, is, is perceived as being a fading ideology, a fading uh, political ideology globally. But here, you see, every country has to adjust, it's a party has to adjust itself. So what adjustments do you think that... Uh, 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 here, you see, things? we have to see, we are operating in a system of parliamentary democracy. We cannot really do anything useful unless uh, we are able within this framework to, uh, to relate to the people and try to solve their problems. Problem. But you know, the CPIM was, 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 was at one point sort, sort of seen almost as being hostile to parliamentary democracy. Well, we have been participating from the very first Lok Sabha, Comrade Gopal AKG was there, AK Gopal, and, and also Joint Party was also participating. Um, hostile in the sense we realize that through this type of uh, setup, you cannot solve the, puppy, the, the problems of the people, remove these, the, these uh, class barriers that is there, and uh, therefore to proceed towards a classless society is not easy. So in what ways do you think that the Communist Party uh, is reinventing itself to be, to be relevant in an era of WTO, of globalization? As you know, this is the... Communist Party, they they have to sort of conduct itself with the in the reality of the situation that is there. You see, I know I cannot stop India joining WTO, but we can make the people conscious about his, the dangers of his of his failures, of his uh, what are the drawbacks it would have, because we can try only to sort of educate people along with ourselves about the dangers of certain situations. Now we are fighting, as you, our party is fighting certain aspects of even the, the budget that has been announced. So they feel that these will help the people. That's why they are raising this issue. We say, after all, I can understand, this is also an, according to many of us, that we should be able to sort of progress, I mean, develop in other parts of the country because uh, working class has faith in us. Somehow we generally faith in us. I found out in, in Punjab that the most important organization in the railways is our organization, our parties, which controlling the railway organization. But somehow um, it has not been possible. It's a very so. How, uh, how is it? Is it a realistic vision or a dream uh, for the Communist Party to form its own government at the centre in the foreseeable future? A very well, near future, I cannot see. Honestly, near future, I cannot see. But I hope the examples of the governance in at least uh, West Bengal, Tripura, and also many times in Kerala will bring to the people, the, uh, convince the people about the difference in the governance that is there. And they will opt for us. But uh, there are so many issues I can't... As, the, as the Bengali Bhadralok that you've been described as, what are some of your sort of, you know, interests and passions outside uh, politics and, and, and the lawyer? You've been, you know, you studied at Cambridge, you went, you have, you know, you're a bar at law. Uh, and now sort of you're working close to the struggling people of India. Yes, uh, well, I will sort of cross over a cultural things. I represent, I'm very proud to represent Shanti Niketa and Bolpur, as you know, the cradle of our India's, uh, I mean, great literary uh, sort of progress and development. I'm very happy and really proud to represent Shanti Niketa. Well, Rabindranath Gurudev worked, lived and worked. Now, there are a lot of uh, cultural activities. I'm very happy to be connected with that. I have been instrumental in constructing one of the most, I mean, excellent auditorium for this. Well, I have been connected with large number of education institutions, trade unions, sports organizations. Those are sort of the public-oriented manifestations of your interest. What's the personal? You know, from for a long, long time. You see, I don't know how I have been managing. About at one time, I was the president of fifty organizations. I'm now the president of about six college governing bodies, by school and trade unions still. And so in a sense, the personal and, 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 and the public aspirations uh, coalesce? Is yes, I'm the, I was the chair, you see, Jyoti Vasu wanted me to head the 
was being on industrial development corporation. I was there for 10 years. I resigned only for this, uh, uh, just before the election. And uh, that was a very challenging job. And uh, it was, uh, in a sense, satisfying also. West Bengal has taken a big turn in industrial development. Then I've been, I'm the chairman of the development authority in my constituency, local development authority. We are doing, a, I mean, fairly appreciated the work we have been doing. So this large canvas of involvement, uh, ten-time MP, speaker of the um, Lok Sabha, uh, 11th time MP, 12th time MP, what is your aspiration? Where does this go? No, no, no. I want to feel that when I sort of lay down my baton, the people say, well, here is somebody who tried to help. He was my friend. But that's my greatest uh, ambition, greatest hope. And I must say that uh, my greatest satisfaction is when I go to the villages and people relate to me. They have faith in me. I try to be with them as much as possible. That gives me great satisfaction, I must tell you. And if I can do little for them, nothing more important for my life. And, uh, well, 12 time, 13 time, I don't know. It may be, may not be. But uh, I don't know how they will live for that so long. But, uh, you see, in a sense, I have been a satisfying life. Because to be in Parliament, to get the also, I got the award also from Parliament. I sat there, this is one of my most important days in my life. And uh, people have come to sort of look up to me as the, that the, here, is, here is a leader of a party or a par member of a party, which are, the party is so concerned, I mean generally concerned with the people. And I have been doing that duty along with I, my other comrades, not alone, me alone. And that's the satisfaction when people express their faith and confidence in us. And I can tell you the, la the number of uh, correspondence, number of representations from all over the country, where we, our presence is very, very limited. People have been writing to me, we find that you are alone, or your party alone is doing, talking about these problems, people's problems. Therefore, will you please also take up our cause? But that gives a satisfaction that the people have faith in our party. Adding to that applause, thank you very much. Thank this is a great, great honor. Thank, thank you very, very much, much indeed. Okay. Thank you, sir.